Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sam Clift and in today's video I'm going to be going through my first impressions of my Faber-Castell Pitt Pastels, the first time I've ever used pastel pencils. They've been on my wish list for the last two years uh, but I thought I'd really try and get the hang of uh, coloured pencils to begin with before I invested in a different medium. So I'm going to give you my very honest first impressions and I'm going to be drawing this fox I obviously haven't finished, still got a way to go, but I'm just going to go through and show you the initial stages of this drawing and give you my first impressions of the pencils. I hope you enjoy the video. Here they are. I am so excited about these. I have wanted them for so long, so I decided to go for the full 60 set. Look at that. There's nothing better than opening a box with a full set of colour pencils in, new pencils. So you've got the little leaflets there and they're laid out beautifully in all of the colours and it's a double layer. So here are the more muted tones underneath and the pinks and the greys and the blacks. So a beautiful little presentation box there that you actually don't want to disrupt because I know they're not going to look like this in a couple of days time. And I'm going to be using pastel mat and I bought two different pads, different colours here. So you've got the greys and the kind of yellowy tones. And then I also ordered a pad of the white, just the plain white pastel mat. These aren't A4. I didn't read the instructions properly and actually they're a little bit smaller than that, but really good to start with. Good for the studies that I'm going to be doing to try out the pencils. And they come with these little acid free uh, bits in between to protect the paper if you're going to be using them as a sketchbook and also to rest your hand on so you don't smudge the rest of your drawing, which is brilliant. They're really great. I've got a little stack of these now that I use. So starting off, I've I'm just going in, not really knowing what to do about sharpening the pencils, whether they will work uh, in my current sharpener or not. So what I'm doing is just using them as I found them in the box, which, you know, they come to quite a sharp point, but they're stubby, really. So they were a little bit difficult to use because I couldn't quite see where the end of the pencil was touching the paper. So I've sharpened this one. You can see the difference here. And I'm using my sawfish sharpener, which worked really, really well, actually. And what I'm doing is just going in to the outline of the paper. The last drawing I did, uh, that little house mouse, I actually used pastel mat. So I've used pastel mat before, but this is the first time using pastel pencils. And I've got to say, I just am loving them. They lay down on the paper really nicely. Obviously this pastel mat is perfect for them. It's designed for pastel pencils. But I just love that feeling of the texture that they, you can feel every movement of the pencil on the paper, which is even more heightened than the normal coloured pencils that I use. So I've gone in with the darker colours. This isn't black. And actually one thing I really did notice quite soon into using these pencils is that they don't have the colour written on the pencil. They've got the number which you can then look it up in the little booklet that they've got and all of the colours are obviously similar or the same as the polychromos but it's not written on the pencil so it's going to be a little bit difficult to work out what they are. Um, that might take a little bit of getting used to and so I'm just going to um, give kind of a vague colour choice. So what I'm doing is using them in the same way that I would colour pencils. But what I noticed is that you can get a lot more pigment down really, really quickly, which is a massive bonus compared to colour pencils, which take forever to smooth out the tooth of the paper if you don't want a grainy look. And also just getting the layers down. Now, I did know that with pastel pencils, that you can lie light over dark, which is amazing. And I knew that colour pencils, you could do that even more, a little bit like using paint. So I know that I could go in with lighter colours on top of the dark. But I was starting with the light to dark. I outline with the dark pencil as per usual. And then I'm just going in with the oranges and reds that I can see in the reference photo of the fox, just to 
have a feel of them really, just to see how they lay down, how they worked. And then going in with a slightly darker colour, I was a bit concerned that I wasn't going to be able to get the detail in or be able to really be specific about where I was putting the pencil, if that makes sense. I felt like they were a lot smudgier. My only experience of pastels is at school when you used the pastel sticks and they were difficult to use because you couldn't get that soft point and I know things have moved on a long way in 20 years uh, 20 oh gosh 25 years since I was at school that's a bit scary but uh, that was all I had to go on so I was really pleasantly surprised that I could get such a good get such good kind of detail in precise detail that was a massive plus for me and I know that other artists that I've watched on Instagram for years do some amazing work with these pencils so I hoped that I could but I, I didn't know how easy that would be to achieve now actually it's it's just as easy as with coloured pencils the other thing is that I was a bit concerned about was them smudging in together and muddying up and then not being able to lay down any more layers on top which I, so I was being extra extra cautious, I think, to begin with. I didn't go in with too many layers. I was hesitant on putting too many colours down just to see how many layers I could actually put down on the paper without it turning into a muddy mess, which actually it hasn't yet. So that's good. I, you know, I put down about five or six layers. In colour pencils, I'd be putting down probably 10, 11, 12 by this point. So this is how, why they come into their own, really. I was able to get a lot of area covered really, really quickly. This is the other plus that I was really excited about. You can see I'm using a light grey there. I've already laid down the black pencil and I'm laying light grey on top of the black. How amazing is that? You don't have to leave... A gap for the highlight anymore. You can put all of your dark colours in and then go over the top with a light colour, which is just unbelievable to me. For years I've been using the colour pencils that you need to be really definite about leaving gaps and that's all sometimes quite difficult, especially in a very, very small area. So this was just amazing. I, I kind of wanted to put more highlights in the pupil but that wasn't showing up in the reference photo. And I know that if the light looked odd, then it just wouldn't work and it would kind of ruin the piece. So I resisted. So just going in with some fur now. Now I've gone in with a little bit of detail. I might come in with a little bit more once I get used to the pencils and how they feel. But what I thought I'd do is lay down a base colour and see how that worked. And I'm just using kind of small scribbly movements with the pencil. And you can see it just covers up that grey brilliantly and really easily. It's a little bit grainy, but that's OK because I wanted some texture in the fur. I'm going in with a lighter colour now and just mapping things out. I do like this mid-tone paper. I've just been used to using the white paper I usually use the Fabriani Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolor paper it's a bit of a mouthful and I always use white and I use the the really the brightest white that you can get whitest white or whatever it is and it's lovely to be able to use this mid-tone paper start with the mid-tones and then be able to go lighter and darker because I've always found that I couldn't go as light as I wanted to, even if I left the paper really bright. It just wasn't enough. And I've used the brush and pencil, um, that titanium white that you paint on. I'm not very good at it. I don't know what I do wrong. I either mix it wrong, but it, it, it looks like Tipex to me. And it's just not a very pleasant surface to have. I know you can draw over the top, but I just... I didn't really get on with it. I don't really want to use gel pens because they're not archival and I'm selling my work. I, I don't want that to crack uh, or split or chip off in the future. White colour pencils, 
The best I found is the actually, I think it's Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. It's actually a watercolour pencil that you can then wet. And I end up, I just touch it on my tongue. I don't know. It's not toxic. I do know that, but uh, I, I didn't dip it in any water. But it it was just enough to lay a lighter colour on top. But it, it just, it still doesn't have that pop of white, which sometimes you really, really need in a highlight. And so this is the answer to my prayers when it comes to that. It, you know, you can lay white over black, which is just amazing. Um, I don't think I'm going to get over that. I don't think I'm ever going to get bored with that because it's just brilliant. It's just a game changer for me in terms of my pieces that I want to do. And one of the things that really stood out to me uh, with this technique in colour pencils was when I drew a tiger and I really wanted white fur over the top of the kind of oranges and reds and then the black stripes that it had. And it, the end piece to me always looked too grey and it really bugged me. It gave it made the overall piece look a bit flat to me. It needed highlighting in some areas. I know white is generally grey and there's lots of different colours that go into a white, but in some sections it would have really benefited from having a really bright highlight, which I just couldn't get. So this is why I'm so excited about these pencils. This fox has a similar thing. It's got a white rough around its face, which kind of interlays over the top of the orange fur. And so that's probably why I picked this reference photo. I might actually put the photo at the top of the screen so that you can see what I'm working towards. But I'm really excited to see how these pencils will lay over the top of one, the grey paper, which is great because you can get the brighter highlights to show and also pencils over the top of other pencils. These pencils are definitely dustier than the normal colour pencils, which have a wax or an oil base. These, I have no idea how they're made, but they're dusty. I think everybody probably knows that. Um, I didn't feel like it was affecting my throat or anything. I actually sit in quite a big room um, with doors that, and windows that can open out into the fresh air. So I. I didn't really notice it affecting me in any way, but I will hold judgment on that and wait and see. The other thing that I know that you can do, which I did accidentally on this piece, usually when I'm using colour pencils and there's a little bit of fallout from the, the tip of the pencil, I've got a, a very cheap makeup brush that I just brush the crumbs away with. Now I just must have been in that habit of doing it and I brushed this and it just it kind of smudged all my detail away which obviously is going to happen but I just just didn't think but what it did was it gave a really lovely blended result and I thought oh wow this is another technique that you can use with these pencils that you can't use with colour pencils of course you can blend colour pencils and the way that I use them is usually to go over the top of them with a soft pencil like a luminance in a lighter colour. And you can really blend away some of the pencil strokes so you get a softer kind of finish. With these, you can do it so, so easily. They blend together as you're using them. So they blend over the top. You can see I'm using the pencil as I would with a colour pencil. I'm using the first strokes but actually as you start putting the layers on they blend over the top of each other brilliantly then I thought going forward I could probably I know you can use your finger and it's probably a really good way of blending but just because you've got oils in your skin it probably would be better to use uh, a tissue or something like that or a little piece of soft rag that's not going to you know, come apart on your drawing. But I think to blend, I've also got some paper stumps, which are brilliant for that. I know cotton buds were something that people would possibly use. And I know that I have used them in the past, but they are banned now, aren't they? Which is actually great. We all need to do our bit and 
maybe they need to think about making the cotton bud section out of wood and then that might you know but anyway the paper tortillions are brilliant for this paper stumps and they obviously biodegrade which is great they are going to work really well with this so I'm definitely going to try that out so just going in with some darker colours now just to add a little bit of depth and detail I don't know what this colour is I'm going to have to get used to these and start working out what the colours are and then I can tell you in future tutorials that was a little bit red obviously there aren't as many colours as there are with the polychromos which have 120 to choose from these had 60 I don't know if that's the biggest set that they do but um, obviously that's half you haven't got the range of colours the range of browns and reds it's a really good range and I you know this is my first time I'm just finding my feet so I definitely made a few mistakes but the great thing with this is that you can just put another pencil over the top really really easily in a way that you can't do with colour pencils so I wasn't too worried I knew I could go in afterwards and tone it down tone down any red that I put in and just add a little bit more orange or brown over the top or even a much lighter colour and it would be absolutely fine you can see there's a little bit of the wood I didn't notice it when I was drawing kind of hanging off there which could be quite um, I wonder if the wood's breaking up when I'm sharpening so I don't know whether to invest in a different sharpener if anyone's got a sharpener that they really really recommend I'd be grateful but for the moment I'm using the swordfish curve the crank mechanical pencil sharpener and that seems to be working really really well because the part that you put the pencil into is actually got a rubber uh, grip instead of a metal one which the other ones have so they don't dent the the pencil which is great so for the moment that's working but we shall see they are lovely to hold I'm used to using this kind of pencil as I've got the luminance color pencils so I'm used to this kind of fatter wood pencil which is lovely really nice to hold I've got to say though the colours on the end you know they, the colours on the end of the pencil to kind of represent the colour was very very different to the one that was going down on some of the pencils so which I've never really had before it's difficult to remember what it was like to not know polychromos or luminance I feel like I know them so well now they're so familiar to me that I forget when I didn't know the colours so here I am back to square one although I suppose it's not quite square one because a lot of the colours are the same as the polychromos but I did notice there are a few different ones like hooker's green for example that stood out to me but there's still the cold greys and the warm greys and the ochres and that kind of thing so I will get used to them so just going in with a little bit more detail you can see that it's starting to build up now you can see that there's lots of different colours in this fur it's easy to get those different colours in darkening up lightening up going over the top working it again I didn't have too much trouble getting in the detail that I needed which was great I was a bit concerned about that I don't know if I'm getting as sharp as a point as I need to when I need to go in at the end and add the final details but for now I think it's okay I'm using the pencils the same I'm using small pencil strokes to show the the small uh, the shorter fur and then using longer pencil strokes to kind of indicate the longer fur there you go adding a little bit more highlight on top which you just couldn't do with colour pencils I've also heard that you can use coloured pencils and pastel pencils together so you can use the, the pastel pencils if you want to to put a really quick underpainting in get that pigment down cover the paper fill in a bit of the tooth so get rid of the graininess and then use the colour pencils on top so that's going to be really interesting I'm going to try that at some point in the future 
it's just so exciting to use a different medium. There you go, there's a warm grey. And you can see how it just blends nicely using small circles and it just it's just so easy to blend. Darkening up again. It does feel like that the problems I have with colour pencils, the things that I struggle with personally, I know that not everybody does. They've got their techniques honed a little bit more. But I do feel like the problems that I have come across with coloured pencils have been answered with these. I'm really excited about it. I'm sure there's going to be more problems that, that come up with these ones that you don't get with coloured pencils. And I am very loyal to my coloured pencils. I love them. I don't think anything's ever going to take its place. But if I can use something else and I can use them together, then great. I just think that's amazing. It's going to be, you know, a game changer to my drawings going forward. It's really, really exciting. So you can see they're just very, very similar to the coloured pencils, a lot quicker. This would have taken me a lot longer, double the time possibly to get the same amount of colour pigment down with the coloured pencils. It just, it just would. So the drawing I showed you at the beginning, I think that was probably two hours work, two and a half hours work. Well, that would be probably five hours in colour pencils. So you can see they cut the time down by half at least. I am going to be bringing a video out soon, which actually does the whole fox, you know, the whole fox from start to finish. And then I can really give an impression of the pasta pencils because I've used them from start to finish. So look out for that video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.